Kia ora, Pisces. Welcome to your May 2016 tarot reading with me. Guys, I know you're the last, but it will be worth waiting for. And it also helps induce that great adage of patience is a virtue. So you may have well looked at some of the other readings for the month, either your moon or rising signs, and seen the particular layout that we will be following. We are using the Rider Waite deck and um, quite an in-depth reading for the month. Each card covers off about a day and a half's worth of energy. So it looks like your shuffling is done. Let's lay the cards out and see what's in store for you. That is the beginning of your month up there. Second week. Third week. Fourth week. So guys, let's see how I'll move my camera a little bit just to keep us in focus and check that that is focused. Let's see what you guys have got in store. Looking across the camera screen, I see more of an energy of grey coming through. I think that's quite often um, contemplative energies and sometimes more um, thinking about things and maybe not full action as if something is going on in the background. So let's also <laughs> count your major arcanas. We have one, two, three four, five. Court cards we have one, two, three. And an ace, of course. Let's start at the very top left, up the back of the screen there, and you start in with the two of wands. It feels as though you are looking back towards something that you may have started creating earlier on in the year, possibly even a longer period than that. And this is literally creating. So this could be to do with your career or business opportunities or your thought processes that are creative energies, which can include the arts, the craft world, um, your own personal directions and of things that you are wanting to uplift as well. So... When this card sort of is in your reading, it's as if you are contemplating, which is where the grey feeling, you know, comes in this contemplative mind energy, about who you are, what direction you're going in, or what direction you want your career or creativity spark to head in. And the fact that it starts off looking back out, it feels as though it's connected to something you may have been thinking about previously or started previously as well. It is often too about looking beyond your current infrastructure or the current position of where you are. So often this um, denotes potentiality for change in your career and a movement away from your current path, literally. So whether some of you are contemplating a new career direction or a promotion or leaving a job to seek new employment or even moving overseas is a possibility as well or, or moving somewhere away from where you are currently. We come to the second card and we have the Hierophant. He kind of always to me has this feeling of putting a cuck hold on things as if he says now stop and pull your socks up and obey the rules and follow the um, societal patterns in life. It's like you can be boxed into a situation when this card is around. It warrants your behaviour being dutiful. You know, if if there are certain things that need doing or requirements or attitudes around at this particular point in time, it pays to adhere to them. It's the card where I sort of say there's a lack of freedom. It's all about indoctrination and um, being responsible and towing the line. But at the same time, it is still a spiritual card. So sometimes it also connects us to our own spiritual 
uh, paradigm and either recreates your belief system again or you may pick up your interest in philosophical or spiritual teachings or studies. You may even change the particular belief system that you currently follow. You might be really interested in a new one. So oftentimes this is the initiation of new thoughts and areas of your life within that I don't know if the right word is religious, but within that spiritual context or realm of the way we live. I think also, as I said earlier, legally don't do anything wrong. Maintain a forefront of accuracy and goodwill in society and within your own life and the things that you choose to do at this time. The Seven of Pentacles is, even though it's a bit of a boring looking card, it actually is a nice one to have. It shows reward for your hard work and that you are slowly reaping um, success and promises from the efforts, time, the way you work, your, your dedication and how you have garnished together everything that has got you to this point. You will often find that there is a slight increment in your monetary systems around this time. You may find a small windfall one way or another, or if you have bills to pay, it's as if money is around to be able to accommodate those things. It doesn't mean have a great wild party and go all, you know, wow, I've made it to the top and I'm going to spend it all. It just means that everything you've been doing up until now is paying dividends and can quite often mean that if you have got some money invested somewhere in stocks or bonds or property, it's probably in a quite safe place for now. This one right next to it is about money again. Although he, in a way these two are very um, tied in, the, the four of pentacles has a feeling as if the guy is a little bit worried about his money and he's holding on a bit tight to it, almost fearful, or fretful or anxious. Now if you hold those energies around your finances, you're going to create that feeling and you're going to um, make things more anxious than they are. This card is very much about not um, falling into the trap of fear or worry, but rather to open yourself out and see that you have in fact got a diverse area where your monies are either invested or where the potentiality of your money is coming from. So open yourself up a little bit and don't be afraid. Again, it's not a time to be wildly spending, but your the money is there to cover off the um, the stock standard average bills and monthly household costs if you like. Again this card has a feeling of some sort of small windfall coming your way or an unexpected financial increment. So there's two cards that to me give that little bit of energy or meaning. So keep an eye out for that Pisces. You go to the second row and we see the first card on the left is the Ace of Swords. Aces are always a wonderful card to have in your reading because they propagate new beginnings. This Ace of Swords, however, is the one that has perhaps a little bit of a sting in its tail. He's holding the sword up in the air and these wreaths or laurels are hanging off the top of the crown in a little bit of disarray. So the sword is as if you have thrust that literally up someone and said, here, stick it. I've won and that's how I feel about you and the situation. So often this is the ace of winning a triumphant um, acquisition or project but at the cost of losing something else in the interim. Sometimes this card can even be the suggestion that you uh, have a separation from a relationship and it can even sometimes be a divorce card that pops up. So it can have to do with legal matters or signing documents but again it's it's saying that you've come to the end of an old project and this is the beginning of starting a new one with your own success as you move forward. The Magician, wow, right next to it. So double whammy, it's all about uh, newness and magic and the opportunity of grabbing things from the universe and running with ideas and thoughts, creativity, power in particular, passion and um, triumph. So this is a really powerful period for you guys right here. The magician is magic, but you have to grab it. It's no good sitting back on your laurels or, or going, oh well, it'll come to me. 
it won't it'll bypass you if you don't make yourself available and searching for the opportunities that are floating by latch onto them and give it all you've got because it could be a very exciting time to project yourself in a new area and direction this person here could even be associated with it there's an offer coming or a potential offer from this type of person who is a water sign generally and quite often an older person so he could be associated with this new feeling of direction or energy power or passion he could very well be a possibility of a new romantic liaison one way or another um, so that could be what this is all of this whole row here could all be about finishing old relationships magical new ones coming in so very strong heart connection relationships with someone who might be a water sign and even this here it sort of ties in again as if he is offering this and this is the beginning of very new um, special bonded relationships that are supportive nurturing um, protective strong you know all of the trustful faithful honorable all of those positive high energy vibrations that most people want to have within a relationship and this card portends that energy and quite often it's new energy coming in so the whole row to me is is reeking of the potential of new relationships remember not all new relationships we're talking about have to be romantic so this could be re relationships at any level so keep an open mind and a broad expanse for that we come here to the three of pentacles in the third week this isn't it's also a really good card to have even though i find it fundamentally unattractive to look at it's about success in an area of career or achievement or projects or something that you have been doing and working on and it comes to fruition and it is successful and possibly wins accolades or accreditation so it could even be exams for some of you who are sitting exams and you have passed or projects that you have been doing and again doesn't have to be career but quite often is so these projects are being um, accepted and well thought of by others now sometimes it also means that you have worked in partnership cohesively with a group of people or someone else and oftentimes there can be something again like a small promotion involved or a monetary um, increment so you've got really great signs in the month of sort of finances being buoyed up somehow and incremental amounts of extra finances the Queen of Swords next to it, she whether or not she was involved in this project or she's just someone who is around you, quite often an ear sign older woman, they can be quite good to go uh, and speak to regards intellectual topics or legal or law or business matters along those lines, but they can be um, occasionally they can be quite terse with their words as well. She could be a friend or potential new partner again because we're still talking about partnerships and newness around here. If she is, you have to learn to live with the way they speak and the way they deal with things. They're very much about the mind and they think about the mind and, and utilise that energy a lot. And sometimes when they verbalise things, it can be a bit critical or come out a bit terse. Don't worry about it, live with it. The High Priestess. A really magical card again sort of back in this magical realm we have this moon down here which indicates possibly energies that have emanated from the time period of the eclipses in March where we see a lot of people on the planet will be going through immense changes quite often a deep emotional spiritual or and physical as well this can be a time of um, connection to psychic realm so really increased psychic abilities becoming clairvoyant yourself also very deep dream capacities and dreamscapes you may go into astral travel and have um, connections with past people in your life or spirit worlds you may um, really get an increment there with with all of your guides and angels and anyone around you and past family members it's also about polar opposites, black and white, day and night, light and dark, 
female and male. So there's some sort of counter joining there. There's also this very deep sacred knowledge that she holds in her lap. So this can be a time of ascending to unbelievable power and knowledge, especially your own internal life path power. Who you are, where you're going, how the cosmic universe works and how it associates and draws into your life and the whole lot configure together. It is also a card of sexual attraction and um, fertilization. So for some of you there will be really um, strong chemistry attraction to other people <laughs> um, and fertile periods. So anyone thinking of starting a family or wanting conception of a baby, this could be a fertile time. And even the card next door to it doubly kind of amplifies this message as well. So this is quite a strong week here for possible uh, sexual activity, attraction and fertilisation. Again, she talks about uh, finances, positive finances again. And look down here. So you all the whole month through, you've got fairly positive messages for your finances. She exudes happiness, uh, harmony, social activities, being the gracious hostess, calm, knowledgeable, very good with finances, investments again. You know, someone might come to you and ask you how you're doing it or ask for your inspirational ideas on projects or money or investment. This one down here, possibly the Knight of Pentacles, can be this person turning up in your life, a younger earth sign energy. He's definitely engaged in your month's reading. So again, possible new interest coming in or friendship or co-worker. Um, the other thing that this could be is the offer of newness again around money. So ideas coming to you or projects. So they're connected here, these two. Uh, you, you've got so much. This is a money month for you and a projects and kind of a success month. Some of you may have been applying for new jobs. This is a great sign of the positive opportunity when this comes along. You may get offered a job. If you're looking, do all the right things. Get your CV up and running. Have it working really well. Put your um, applications out for as many jobs as you like because the chances are you're going to get one of them. The Nine of Swords tells us about inner anxiety and tensions and um, Nighttime terrors, we've got a bit of this is connected here. We come back to the night again here, definitely, and the moon. You may have had um, insomnia for a while, or you've got things on your mind when you go to bed at night and you can't rest and you can't get enough sleep, or this activation here is creating such intense dream time that you're either a little bit concerned about it or it worries you. Don't be frightened, connect with it. Your dreams generally give you intense messages and um, information about your pathway. If you listen to them, diarise your dreams and really get into analysing them, they contain so many answers and they can help you out of problems that you have around you. So also do things that will help alleviate stress at night and um, insomnia. Take herbal remedies, have back massages, you know, get rid of any tension in your shoulders, go to bed early, uh, read soothing books, turn off technology, eat the right types of foods as well, have your hormones balanced. All of those things help with the ability to get a good night's sleep. Although me saying that is quite a joke because actually I'm a chronic insomniac, but I live with it. Now the hermit right next to this one. So in fact, these last three here towards the end of the May reading say that from all this lovely light, positive, bright energy, you have some sort of turning inward feeling as if you are going inward. And it could have been an initiation from this type of energy or this one that makes you rethink things. You feel as if you are wanting to spend a bit of time alone, contemplate something at a very deep personal level, could be relationships, could be your career, uh, could be your spirituality. Time alone is often a wonderful gift because it allows us to re-seek who we are and connect with our inner self. The Hermit is quite a magical card, but he 
um, he does things on his own and at his own pace. He doesn't need other people. Although sometimes in saying that he can almost be a mentor for you. You may have gained some illumination or insight from someone else's words or their direction or their philosophy which could be taking its um, shape in your life right now. He does come to a point of illumination so he is seeing light and he's seeing a different direction in his life and he definitely is looking back here somehow. So the feeling is it may be associated with um, career or um, possibly people in your life and some changes that you are wanting to make with situations that are around. And then we come to the tower and we see this as the brand new um, coming of the big change in life. The tower t tells us that there is not enough stability in the bottom of this building and that it, with too much pressure under it, it starts to topple and fall. Now sometimes when this card turns up, it can literally be quite a quick, rapid event and it can be tempestuous and there can be arguments involved. So if it does happen, just try to stand back, don't be too verbal at the time, remove yourself from the situation as best you can and let it pass. But even if you do that, it is going to have a permanent effect and it's quite often non-reversible and you do go in different directions. And sometimes this can be people that um, go in different directions so this can be the severing again of relationships but if this happens it is time that it needed to because as I say it wasn't built on a stable foundation it wasn't doing either of you or the group of you any good and something needed to be cleared and recorrected or calibrated and that's what the tower card is it should really say recalibration <laughs> and we often need recalibration in our lives and especially in this modern age where everything is so intense and powerful and quick we need to recalibrate a lot of situations and relationships and directions so there you are Pisces overall I think you've got a really cool reading there's a lot going on you've got a lot of positivity in here and you've also got lots of um, direction for change and newness coming through your reading. I think you will make connections in the month at quite a spiritual level and you will probably get this um, intensity of the dreamscape and come to understand a little bit more about that other dynamic or perspective of life. So thanks very much for joining me. I really love doing the readings and I appreciate you all listening, liking and subbing. So all the best for May, you Pisceans. Thank you again. Ka kitia noa. Much aroha. Namaste.